This is a statistics problem where we're conducting a hypothesis test about the difference between two independent population means. These are independent in that we're not trying to check if there's any association between the two. We're just looking at political science, a bunch of assignments uh, that involved essays with writing, comparing that to the same um, type of thing for history to see how that um, number of pages of writing compares on average. So this is a quantitative kind of test. We're going to look at one quantitative variable, multiple groups. And here we have the option to enter that. Typically the default is raw data where we would have a bunch of uh, measurements. In this case, it would be a number of pages for a bunch of assignments. We actually have the mean and standard deviation summarized here. So you can call this population one and two, or you can be more specific with this problem. We do know that population one is political science and two is history. So I'm just going to put that clearly. And then I'll go ahead and just enter the summary statistics, mean standard deviation and sample size. And then once I have that all added in from the problem, I can run my analysis. If it's um, an actual set of raw data, I'll get some summary stats and graphs. Here I'm just going to get inference. Um, but you'll have to scroll all the way to the bottom if you enter raw data to find this section. And we can do uh, an interval for the difference, or typically we'll just do a test. Um, intervals are a little bit rare in this situation. And then in my problem, um, we're comparing the two. We always set them equal for the null hypothesis. The alternative could be uh, less than, greater than, could be not equal. In this case, um, there is a hypothesis here with a direction to it, specifically more than. So that's how I'm going to set it up. In Staplet, make sure your direction's pointed the same way. This just stayed at the default of no. And then I've got a lot of precision here. If you don't have that much precision, you'll need to change your settings. Um, to six decimal places and recalculate. Sometimes you get a p-value that is less than 0 0.001. Um, if you get that, you'll need to go to the staplet for t-distributions. Enter your degrees of freedom. Mine was uh, 74 as a whole number. Plot the distribution for two-tailed. If it's an equal, not equal, you'll go outside of a region with a plus and minus. That one is if it's two-tailed. Now mine was actually right-tailed. So I will go to the right of the positive version. If it was left-tailed, I would have a negative and I would go to the left of that. Now the two-tailed is really just double what the individual sides are. So that's kind of a good thing to to practice around and play around with. It is interesting to me that this will only do four digits of precision maximum. This will do will do more. I've got six here, but when it's less than 0 0.001, this just glitches out for some reason, and I don't know what causes that. So going to complete the problem, I've got a p-value that is less than alpha because my alpha was 0.1 here. So this is a significant result. We're far enough away from the uh, assumed equality here. We're beyond what we would say is a, a margin of error. And we have a statistically significant result with sufficient evidence to conclude that the population mean of political science is more than the population mean of history. Now, the only thing that might be different is if you have a big p-value bigger than your alpha or a smaller alpha, such that this is um, a greater than sign, then you would switch your decision to fail to reject, and you would have insignificant, um, insignificant results and insufficient evidence. So that would be all the way down here, and specifically population mean, more than population mean. Now there's one that talks about just the mean number of pages in the sample, and that's not what we're talking about at all.